And seated in our feature match area, we've got Javier Dominguez. If you were watching earlier, you got a chance to watch him draft and see how his draft came around. He started off actually by taking a double blue card, then he moved into green-white for most of the pack, switching over to black in the second pack where he hemmed and hawed quite a bit, but ended up settling with green-black. His opponent, Eli Loveman, is on green-white. He just stuck to his guns and ended up getting paid off pretty nicely by picking up the Planeswalker, Calyx Destiny's Hand. And he's got... Ooh, ooh right off the top. Oh, and there it is. So Tess and Skirmisher, a bit of a filler card here for Loveman, but uh, it's a fine two drop, and he has yeah. it right here on turn two. And guess what? So does Javier. Oh, and he, fi he found land number four. Of course, he had the Birth of Miletus, but now he can just run out Nyx Herald into turn four Calyx. And uh, if you've ever had the opportunity the privilege or, or the sadness of playing against a Planeswalker on the board <laughs> with defenses set up, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Hey, it's a rare for a rare, though. Satessan champion now for Javier Dominguez. And look at his hand. He's got Skola, Grove Dancer, and Renata, both which would trigger Satessan champion. Oh, and is Eli just going to put the champion oh. under the Herald? So now, now Javier needs to have a removal spell for the Herald to get his champion back. This is huge because now this has made this massive... Wow, what a top situation. deck, though. Inevitable end for Javier <laughs> Dominguez off the top means he can put it on the Nyx Herald and get a savage two-for-one back in his direction. Yeah, and that you know the, the thing is, you know, Eli knowing that Javier has access to the two final deaths means that, you know, he was going to be able to get some, get get a few extra triggers off the Herald. He knew he was going to be safe, w with the exception, of course, unless Javier has the one inevitable end in his deck. Mm -hmm. Wow, incredible draw there for Javier Dominguez, immediately getting really is probably the best card in his deck back onto the battlefield with Renata, Riss, with Skola Grove Dancer at the ready to start just going off next turn. And we see Calix getting plussed here by Eli. He does find a card. He gets to look at the top four and get an enchantment. He finds War Briar Blessing. Honestly, one of his better cards, so that was a nice pickup. If he wants to preserve the Calyx, though, he needs to put the Heliod's Punishment on the Satessan Champion because if Javier plays any enchantment, it will become a 2-4 and it will be able to finish off the Calyx. That's right. And at this point, it loses all of its other abilities and it gains the ability to take one of those counters off of the uh, Heliod's Punishment. You don't want to get on the bad side of Heliod, I'll tell you that. He ain't nice. So here comes Renata onto the battlefield. Renata's power is equal to your devotion to green, so two for Renata's two green mana symbols. And now we get to see the power of Calyx Destiny's hand here. See, wow! Wow. Look at these options. He's got an Arasta and a Dreadful Apathy. Show me my path. And look oh, at the combo that huge. he assembled here as well. You see Javier respond by removing a counter, but we're going to see Renata oh, take my a hike goodness. here. War by our blessing in conjunction with Arasa, the endless of the endless web, says bye bye to Renata. This is huge swings back in Eli's direction, and Calyx has really dominated this board. Right, absolutely. And and you know Javier understood the power level of the Calyx. He had the choice of taking Champion or Calyx, and you can see. You know why he took so long to make that decision? Because this is the power of Calyx. That's right. Now, the Satessan champion is going to do a good job at some point, but will it be too late is the question, as we see no play there for Javier leaving up his copy of Final Death. But look, I mean, Calyx is just drawing Eli a card every single right. turn. And it's a spell, right? right? I mean, he is getting... And he's actually had his choice of spells here as well. Receive the gifts of the gods. Satessan champion working off the debt to Heliod. They're down to just two more counters, but we are now going to finally see Final Death take care of Arasa. That's going to make a 1-2 reach token. And uh, again, each of these interactions, even those ones, favoring Eli Loveman. Yeah. I mean, the damage has been done, and at this point, I mean, Eli is just continuing to get ahead on cards here thanks to Calyx that's in play. That's right, and also, let's not forget, Calyx is now at four loyalty and has a minus ability at the ready as well. So a, basically a removal spell in the bank here for Loveman. Boy, it, I'll tell you, if Eli Loveman can get through this draft with the two wins, especially knocking Javier down to the elimination bracket, it would be massive storyline Absolutely line massive. Loveman, known for his prowess at Modern, which is the format that he ended up winning his Mythic Championship in. He was playing humans. Yeah. 
But when he had his deck laid out, he looked pretty happy about kind of how his deck ended up. He, he got that third pick, Calyx in pack three, you know, nice curve. And, you know, he's not even that concerned right now about that scavenging Harpy in play because he has that transcendent Envoy to block. So Calyx still safe and still just getting Eli further and further ahead. Is he going to miss at some point? No, he is not. A Nyxborn Courser. Obviously, he's built his deck around this card, and it's paid off for him beautifully here. Incredible sequence for Eli Loveman as he moves a step closer. Now, this is, of course, the power of Heliod's punishment is the idea is you put it on your opponent's creature and you basically lock up the game before it matters anymore. Right. All right. Well, Javier able to string together some enchantments here, get some cards, but it might be a little too late at this point. This is an impressive turn for him. He has triggered to test and champion not once, but twice in this one turn, it's replaced itself both times, and he even found two spells, a Voracious Typhon and a Loathsome Chimera. This was a really good turn for Javier. Oh, yeah. The question is, is it too late? Right. Because now we can see Calyx take care of the Satessan Champion or perhaps the Typhon, whatever he decides. And he oh, just wants more cards. Digging. Yeah. The stars will light our way. Big triggers here from Captivating Unicorn as well. He's also gaining some life from Doxos, who is now at 2-8. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to see a big attack here? Looks like maybe just a baby attack. Well, it's not too bad. So if he wants to do this, the Typhon will be able to get through or, or probably eat maybe the 0-4 wall. Maybe it just keeps the Daxos back because it does such a good job of blocking and keeping that Voracious Typhon in check. Mm-hmm. But the Unicorn is a nice attack because if Javier wants to deal with the Unicorn, he's going to have to two-for-one himself and lose both of his creatures on the battlefield. Indomitable Will not available at the moment. He's now tapped out of white. But I think he's more than happy with trading his two-mana one-two flyer for that Scavenging Harpy. Definitely. Down to nine goes Javier Dominguez. Ugh, finds a swamp off the top of the library. Not what he wanted to see. He does have a play for the turn, the Loathsome Chimera. But, you know, at this point, it feels like Javier's in a position where he really just wants to see, like, an enchantment to start trying to get a chain rolling. And yeah. he couldn't do it either. Th that is exactly what he needs. He needs to string together multiple enchantments to kind of establish his board here because Eli, again, with that Calyx in play, now he has the ability to, you know, maybe safely kill that champion. It is a little bit awkward because, you know, Eli has a bunch of enchantment creatures in play, so if Javier ever top decks a removal spell, of course he'll be able to get that creature back. You could see a lot of ways for this to go wrong here for Javier. Um, you know, if you're sitting in Eli's seat, you're looking at Indomitable Will, so that gives you a tap with the Captivating Unicorn. You have Calyx to either find another enchantment likely to get another tap, or you can just start minusing Calyx and say, look, you're out of gas, especially now that he knows that he's actually out of gas. He has no more cards in hand. We may see minus minus here. <laughs> or maybe an game. ultimate? Yeah, you know, ultimate says return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. He does have Heliod's punishment in his yard, and you did see him looking through his graveyard. Ooh, Dreadful Apathy was a nice find, though. That kind of lets yeah. him do both things. I think this, th you know, this should do a really good job of kind of shutting the outs that, yes. that Javier might have. Because now with the Dreadful Apathy, you can exile the Satessan Champion. And now Javier doesn't have the option of, you know, stringing together several enchantments to kind of come back here. Yeah, it's a little awkward on the timing here for Loveman because he could actually try to set up a scenario where he gets an attack in, he would be offering the Unicorn for a trade for two of the two powered creatures on the other side. But the Indomitable Will can also throw off combat in a meaningful way, so he's decided just to keep it in hand and keep chipping away in the air with the Transcendent Envoys. Yeah, it looks like he's just playing it patiently because he's so far ahead on board. He's got that active Calyx. So, uh, yeah, again, just, just kind of playing it safe here. Yeah, now it's desperation mode for Javier Dominguez. He's activating his copies of Skola Grove Dancer, and he's hit a bunch of lands off of them. They both trigger twice, so he did gain four life there. Okay, there's Rage Card Berserker, so that's another big blocker. He now has three creatures with at least four power to be able to offer a trade for the Unicorn and make life difficult. This is a pretty big chunk. Oh. Yeah, I wonder if Eli is going to block with the spider and use Indomitable Will here, or maybe... Hmm. Oh, yeah. I wonder if you just trade there. Yeah, I think you can probably just the, lose lose the um, lose the spider, but it looks like... This you does know. set him up, though, if he finds an enchantment. 
Loathsome Chimera was his draw step because he did get to tap. Well, keep. I mean, look at that graveyard. It is stacked. By the yeah. way, there's a dreadful, dreadful apathy, oh. Warbriar's blessing, and a Heliod's punishment in his graveyard. Oh my Are god, he's doing it! Calyx he's gonna ultimate, ultimate Calyx! <laughs> wow, I did not think we oh, could do there it. was. And it wins him the game. Javier immediately concedes. Wow. I, it's funny, I read the card, I'm like, what is the ultimate again? I am like, what? we're not gonna see that. We're not. No, oh, Who wait, three that? removal spells? Yeah, I guess he'll do it. Wow, and it's really actually extra impressive because Eli, by the way, Calyx is now like his invitational card because he minus it to start that puts calyx at one loyalty right then he plussed it all the way to seven and he never missed <laughs> he never missed a single time so it and killed then the creature, he ultimated to win drew him six cards <laughs> and then won him the game afterwards with the ultimate not bad oh man I wonder if eli is going to consider bringing in some of those triumphant surges as javier does have a good amount of large creatures in his mm -hmm. deck. You know, we saw the yep. Voracious Typhons along with the Rage Guard Berserker. So that is something to consider here. Yeah, there's another card in, in Eli's sideboard that I really... So we got a chance to walk through and look at the players as they were building. But of course, on the coverage team, we always have to be extra careful about interfering with anything in the tournament. So we don't actually speak to them. We just look and say, the most we might say is, uh, how do you feel about your deck? Yep. And then we say, good luck and walk away. Um, but I did notice that at the time when building, he had a chain web arachnir in his board. Now, he had it laid with a, a couple of other sideboard, more sideboard specific cards for flyers. So Eli, I think, had it in his head that this arachnir, you want to bring it in when you have flyers, but not. I disagree. I think you want that in your main deck. I think it's just a good card. I think if you get it into your graveyard and you bring it back, it's huge. Sometimes it kills an opposing flyer and it's worth main decking over you know, some of the cards that he has. I'm curious to see if he wants to bring it in. He only really saw the one flyer, and I think in Eli's mind, he views it as a, as a sideboard yeah, I mean, for give, flyer stuff. Given that you're playing against a Golgari deck, I mean, I don't think it's a high priority card to have in your deck, um, especially because he's not really especially good at putting cards into his graveyard. He has a few escape options already. So in this specific matchup, I, I, I do agree with you. I think it's the kind of card that you want to start in your main, but I can see not having it after sideboard in this matchup. Well, it looks like Eli is, uh, he, he agrees with you, Paul. <laughs> I can't i can't win here. Nobody likes this chain web arachnir. I'm the only one. And uh, it's just never going to see the light of day. The good news uh, for, for Eli is that if he is going to be facing down some flyers, he already has a Rasta of the Endless Web in his hand. So he's not dying to a flyer, yeah, I'll tell you that. that. <laughs> that's a good one. Citessen Skirmisher is uh, going to kick things off here for Javier Dominguez. And a Transcendent Envoy. For Eli, he passes a turn back. Javier lands, uh, put, plays land number three, and he's got a choice here. But it looks pretty obvious, right? Just run out the Chimera. Yeah, I mean, he might consider just offering this trade. Oh, I'd definitely do that. Eli has plenty of good auras in his deck. Oh, he actually is just going to keep his intestine skirmisher back. Interesting. And here's Siona, Captain of Pileus. And we hit. If he, if he never misses with Calyx, he better hit when Siona hits the battlefield. <laughs> That's seven cards. Yeah, most of enchantments are auras, so. Both players deciding just to sit back. Yeah, good point. Calyx can hit any enchantment versus just auras right. for Siona. And we're going to see Renata. A nice curve out here from Javier Dominguez goes two, three, four, and has put up some serious power. Yeah, but Eli has multiple answers to this Renata. If you look at his hand, he's got the Revoke Existence, he's got the Mystic Repeal, so all kinds of options. And of course, we talked about it before, Renata is one of those cards where you simply don't want to let your opponent untap because, you know, all you have to do is play creatures and they all come into play with an additional plus one, plus one counter. And we're going to see Warbriar Blessing on Siona here as well. Oh, probably want to put it on Siona. Get you, get a, you, get, you get an additional one, one here. If he yeah. did do that, he probably... He can get the Satessan Skirmisher off the battlefield. Hmm. Boy, I really... Oh, well, it, you it get it either way. Anything, anything. Yeah, I, mis I misunderstood. All right, so this works out beautifully then for, uh, for Loveman, as now he just gets this extremely annoying 1-1 one -one that Javier is just like, I guess I have to trade my Loathsome Chimera for? Ugh. You know, Eli, surprisingly, I mean, in a green-white deck, typically you don't expect it to have a lot of removal, right? The, mm -hmm. That color combination is just not something where you think, oh, a lot of removal. But Eli has a lot. You know, we saw the Dreadful Apathy. We saw the Blessings. And, you know, he's got several disenchant effects with the Revoke. Oh, now that is respect, Paul. 
That is respect. That is Erebos' <laughs> intervention. I called it an annoying 1-1. One -one. That was uh, a lot wow. of respect for a 1-1. One -one. He used his sweet rare removal spell just to keep trying to get damage in. Javier looking at this board and going, it's probably not going to go great for me from here. I need to apply pressure. That is it's extremely done. aggressive. Wow. And now we're going to see yeah. the big brick wall. And this is such bad news for Javier Dominguez. He needs to draw removal right now. All right, well, he can run over it with Gift of Strength, but this is not how he wins this game. Yeah, but even if he does that, I mean, that's still going to create a pesky 1-2 token, which still does a good job of blocking the Loathsome Chimera on the following Unbelievable. Turn. Yeah, and this is yeah. a, a good block here from Eli. He's just like, sure, man. Yeah. And there's the 1-2 Reach Spider. The Chimera does attack, but as you mentioned, Paul, the spider's going to sit back and uh, block, and now here's a Moss Viper due to the same type of duty. Curious to see if he's going to fire off this Heliot's Punishment or if he's going to wait for a bigger creature. He's got he's got two blockers, so you know he's pretty safe. Yeah, I, I actually like his line here, just leveraging one of these two relatively expendable blockers to really tie up Javier's mana and attack steps and time. And he will be rewarded with his patience because now Javier's going to run out the Nyxborn Colossus, which Eli will almost certainly use the Heliot's Punishment on. Oh, of course. He's just Javier knows about the punishment, so he's choosing to run out the Chimera instead of the Nextborn Colossus. Sure. Either way, it's going to be a nice target here for the Heliod's punishment, and we're going to see the damage continue to flow against Javier Dominguez. Two, three, four, down to eight he goes. No second white means that these two cards are stuck in hand for Loveman, and the Nextborn Colossus is the biggest thing on the battlefield. So yeah. this is a interesting position okay. now and another another double white cards we got a game here kids right now remember the moss viper is holding back the nixborn colossus as it stands oh this is a fun little interaction loathsome chimera plus hyrax tower scout means you can get an additional counter off of the loathsome chimera with the heliod's punishment oh and eli hitting him with the nice <laughs> yeah but but javier doesn't have a good attack here because of course moss fire moss viper one man one one death touch Eli really wanting to find a second white source here to kind of unload his hand, but a, a very, very strong draw here with the Dreadful Apathy. Ooh. Here's a Relentless Pursuit, and boy, it needs to find some serious action here. What did he find? A Renata? Oh, no land in there? There's a Voracious Typhon. So he just gets to pick one of these cards. Right. Now, the rest do go in the yard, so the Typhon in the yard's not the worst place for it anyway. Definitely. So he's got that ready, potentially, to come back, depending on how many cards are in his graveyard, and he gets a Renata. And, of course, he can keep attacking here because <clears throat> that Moss Viper is really the only good blocker. Yeah, curious to see how many cards are in Javier's graveyard. Does he have enough to return that Voracious Typhon? Because, you know, that was really big. That pursuit was huge. Yes. He, not only did he get Renata, he got a Typhon in the graveyard. It drew him essentially two cards. Yeah, this has really turned around back in Javier's direction now with white source number two. Not bad. That is actually going to be a decent blocker here, threatening to at least trade for Renata, who has three toughness on her own. But now, I mean... Javier gets a good attack next turn, right? The yeah, Loathsome Chimera has been un unlocked. Free. Yeah, it is free. That extra turn taking it off from the Hyrax Tower Scout is actually mattering quite a bit here. I think Javier is probably going to cast the Typhon here first so that he can get that trigger from the Renata, then probably attack it with Renata and force the trade with the Rumbling Sentry. Boy, this is a nice little comeback brewing here for Javier Dominguez. It's an 8-8 Voracious Typhon, thanks to the Renata. And by the way, Renata is an 8-3. Not every day you see an 8-3, but... Uh, yeah, Javier could also choose to pass and have that Renata on the board because it does put additional counters on any creature that you draw. Yeah. Nope. So this is forcing a couple of trades, most likely. Interesting. Yeah. And then, you know, I think Javier just says, well, when the dust settles, I have an 8-8, so right. let's do that. Ooh! Wow! Alex Destiny wow. and off the what top. What a draw here! Now, this is huge. Oh, my use this goodness. To get rid of the Voracious Typhon and keep the damage flowing here. 
unbelievable oh top deck there for God. Eli Loveman. Calix is absolutely Javier Dominguez's worst nightmare. Look at his face. He can't believe what just happened. That was huge. If he finds a threat here, oh, he finally missed. Yeah, Javier needs to find a removal spell here. He a actually, yeah. no, the, it, it is not under the creature. It's under the dreadful apathy on exactly. the court velocity. Exactly. Uh, Javier Dominguez with the land, and there's Triumphant Surge. And that is the match. Eli Loveman defeats our defending champion, Javier Dominguez, and he is going to move to the winner's bracket. He just put Javier.